So some of, some of the foundations there uh, were, were, were displaced, uh, yes. but that, that would be the southern end. So the Homestead Trail is at the northern end, about eight miles okay, north of that. Yeah. I don't recognize that property there. Uh, my name is Conan. <laughs> <laughs> you probably know more than I do. <laughs> I'll give you the pointer. <laughs> This is 1896. My, my grandfather had a farm which is down the river. He was coming up and built Gulf Island Dam. But I was born in the 20s and uh, I was born on the farm, but that's not the farm that I see. I, I, is there another farm someplace war that uh, you know would be in the river? Do you have a, a mark on that? or? I, I probably do at the I probably do at the office. Uh, if you want to if you want to talk after, I can try to connect with you and we can we can mail you some of the research we have on the southern end. Um, there was a lot of when, we had, when the Bates College students were out there back in 2000. Uh, there was a lot of research done on the entire property that helped feed what the state did last year. Um, and we've done we've, we've connected with the Turner the Turner Historical Society some. Um, they unfortunately don't have an exhaustive database of, of what, what happened there, but I'd be happy to try to be helpful if you're looking for it. Thank you. Another question? So you, the, the main access to the park will be uh, by the Conan Road place? Is that well, right, right, right now, the, the, the entrance is off of Center Bridge Road. Center Bridge. Yeah. Um, uh, the easiest way to think about it is travel north on Route 4 yeah. uh, to Turner Village and take a right on 117. Yes. 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 Um, and when you get to Shreps, uh, yeah. instead of turning left, stay straight on yeah. Center Bridge Road. Yeah. It's a couple of miles down on the right. Um, but that's, that's been the area where there is gravel parking. There really isn't a lot of residential development. The boat access is there. Um, uh, one of the great sensitivities with the, the state park, it's called a state park, but the folks that have been involved with the property from the beginning uh, don't they call it a state park in name only. Um, the thought of building massive parking lots, snack shacks, those playgrounds has really been off the table. Uh, locals knew it as the game preserve. Uh, the important thing was to make sure it didn't turn into house lots, uh, not that it would become a, a, a giant playground uh, as some of the other state parks have, have, have been. So we, we've been pretty vigilant with the state. Uh, the state recently acquired a property to the west, which connects to Upper Street, um, which we advocated for simply from a public safety and maintenance perspective. Uh, that if you need to get into the park on an ATV, uh, the ability, if there's a, a hiker injured at the center of the park, a western access from Upper Street gives you immediate access. Mm -hmm. The thought of developing an access on Upper Street amidst those farms mm -hmm. and in Conant Road without volunteers and stewardship on the ground, it really is a recipe for upsetting neighbors that really make it, make it hard to promote getting out there and having a, a rural experience. Um, so right now we, we direct everyone to Center Bridge Road and that's where most of the opportunities for picnic areas, um, in the summer, the, there's porta potties there, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and, and the Homestead Trail. Is the Franklin property up that way? The Franklin property between between Wilson Avenue and Turner. Isn't there Franklin land? There, there is still some Franklin land. Uh, the northern. Let's see. <clears throat> I probably don't have any maps. Maybe uh, the northernmost land that I know that Franklin controls. Um, if if you're at West Pitch Park. Um, West Pitch Park abuts the railroad right away that's owned by Pan Am. <coughs> On the back side of that uh, is, I want to say 12 to 15 acres that's still owned by Franklin Property. Um, my, my understanding is that's probably the limit of what's left of their ownership in Auburn. Uh, they had at one time owned most of, of that section uh, of Auburn. Uh, Auburn. Auburn Heights, where EL is now, was, was part of a vast subdivision they had, had once proposed. Um, I think that's the, the last of it. Um, they certainly still own significant real estate in Lewiston, um, Little Canada, uh, a large section of land along Lincoln Street, and, and some other other places where they claim ownership uh, whenever new infrastructure projects are being pursued. So, what's the total length of the state park of turning down towards Auburn? Uh, I want to say eight miles okay. of, of of river frontage. Um, we recently worked, uh, and I meant to talk, talk about homesteads that are, are, are still in the ground, but there's no home. The northern end of Gulf Island Pond, or the north end of Turner, uh, the land trust recently worked with Maine Farmland Trust to conserve the River Rise Farm, 
which is about 650 acres and two additional miles of riverfront. Uh, and the old river road um, runs along that property as well. Um, certainly the, the impact of the dam is not as significant when you get you know, 12 miles north. Um, but with that two miles of riverfront uh, and the, the eight or so miles on just the Turner side, the state park extends into Leeds as well. Um, over half of Turner's riverfront has now been protected from development um, and is part of the very important wildlife corridors as well. Um, so all of that is all that is on one side of the Escada. What about the other side? On the on the east side, um, uh, in terms of conserved land in in green, um, there is not uh, any at this point. Um, Next Era Energy owns most of the riverfront. Um, uh, so the legacy of CMP coming in and buying all the land, uh, they bought to a certain elevation. Um, so most of the riverfront in green is owned by Next Era, uh, which at least for the time being, um, unless Next Era starts issuing licenses for docks or other things, uh, won't be developed. But certainly along uh, abutting that property, it, much of that is zoned residential. And those who have driven you know, River Road in green have probably seen homes popping up uh, in the last 5, 10, 15 years. Uh, on the lead side, there's about 326, 330 acres uh, of land that's owned by the state that was part of the Diamond Occidental purchase. Uh, and that has another couple of miles of river frontage as well. Um, but it's only accessible uh, by water in the summer uh, and on the ITS, uh, the interconnected trail system for snowmobiles. Snowmobiles can get in there. But there's no public access from land um, to that property. Yeah. Well, they got the word swim in your presentation. How many times a year can you swim in the end of before your skin drops off? <laughs> <laughs> well, the disclaimer, I, I, I don't read all of DEP's reports. We're not a, we're not a water quality group. Um, the, the river uh, in, in the sections that we work uh, is rated C, uh, which is swimmable, fishable. Um, by DEP standards, it meets the minimum standards uh, of the Clean Water Act to be swimmable or fishable. Um, we don't advocate for, for swimming at this point, uh, predominantly because where are the places that we would recommend people do that? Um, there has not been a, a survey of what the appropriate swimming holes would look like. Um, some of them are popping up anyway. Uh, an area known as Cherry Pond to folks in green, uh, which is off River Road, um, sort of where North River Road almost comes to an end. Um, there's a, a small swimming hole there where you can go in the summer and and see kids on a, on a sand beach, which is part of Gulf Island Pond swimming uh, or fishing. Um, and it, it offers the, the topography that makes that a, a possibility. Um, uh, certainly in downtown with the river channels and changing flow, um, that, that's not something that's probably that we'll ever see. Uh, I mentioned the David Rancourt property. Uh, it's ritually configured in a way that it offers two protected coves, both with sand beaches, um, that in the future could have the possibility to be uh, to be a swimming hole once there's a better understanding of, of what river currents look like. Um, but, uh, we certainly are not in a position where we're uh, proposing or, or advocating for swimming predominantly because um, there are too many other activities to get folks into without uh, getting into the dynamics of where those swimming holes might be. Um, but we did have some, some kids taking a, taking a swim last summer. They turned out all right. <laughs> <laughs> they, did not, they did not turn color and they actually had a great time. So. I have a question about the, the foundations and the Harris Estate. Do, are you going to, or is anybody asking for archaeological digs? You know, there are homes there, and I'm curious. Have we historically, I'm going to look to, look to Mike, have we been asked for? No, not yet. I'm actually yet. sitting down with a, a Bates College uh, professor tomorrow mm -hmm. to talk about the history of that property. Mm -hmm. But we, t today, we haven't done anything. Yeah, so we I would think it would be rich. Well, certainly, uh, there's, there's growing use at the Riverlands, and uh, if you go to those homesteads now, you can still see some old tools and other, and other things there, and the extent to which those have been inventoried, uh, whether it's appropriate to leave some of those artifacts there. Uh, it's safe to say, over the coming years, if there isn't a, a, an effort to protect them, they will disappear. Uh, people will, same thing with climbing Mount Katahdin, they should leave their rocks there, and people still manage, unfortunately, to walk off with rocks on occasion. Um, so uh, uh, leave no trace and don't take anything off properties is a very important message. Uh, that way that story is there for future generations. So. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.